you have a look at um, the different designs on the pattern and you select which one that you like keep in mind your body shape you know and what is flattering for you what you do like what you don't like all right so pretend this is your fabric okay yeah it is on the fold and there is your salvage edges and this is the cutting edge when you go and go and buy your fabric in the store it's where they'll cut the fabric for you it sort of comes off the roll now you're going to place a sleeve pattern here for example and in the pattern it gives you a grain line so when you lay your pattern on your material here is your fold line so lay your fabric always facing you on the fold line on your cutting table and when you see the grain line you need to take your tape measure and you need to measure from this fold because these salvage edges have been perfectly aligned and you will take from the fold to your grain line and measure this measurement and whatever this measurement here this needs to be the same there as well so it's completely aligned and in the grain of the fabric because your fabric has two grains so the one is a warp which is going lengthwise and then you've got a weft that's going from right to left and these are the grains that are created when the thread has been you know when they're threading and making the fabric this is how they make it so you've got cones of threads going in the warp direction lengthwise and threads going on the weft so it's the weave the weave that's creating the material you need to work within those grain lines with the weave when you are actually doing your pattern if you don't follow your grain lines your pattern you can make your garment your garment's going to be distorted it's going to pull it's going to twist and piece here is a back trouser let's say i'm positioning it over here so i'm now going to take my tape measure and i'm going to measure the grain this is the fold line on the edge of my cutting table 27 centimeters i will do exactly the same so i will measure here as well um, i'll shift the pattern to make sure it's also 27 and that's 27 and even if this was 24 it doesn't matter what this measurement is whatever this is it needs to be the exactly same at the bottom all right so you're placing your pattern down you're obviously going to try and save as much material as you're going along so you first of all you start with the biggest pieces of your pattern which are your trouser leg so you lay your trouser leg down you take your tape measure and you start measuring the grain to make sure that it's accurate I flipped this trouser over and once again I'll do the same thing I will measure the grain lines all the way down and then I will put my weights down and I will pin it and I'll move on to the next pattern pieces I'm going to do the one side black and the one side pink but the sewing construction is all the same it's just I want to be cutting out my tops um, in a single layer, one the right side, um, one color, and the left side, another color, and the same with the front leg. Now, the back top is actually just placed on the fold, and the front is two times the material. Follow the grain line, you'll see the grain line. If you have a look at the front, the grain line is going across, and here's your center front. So, follow your grain line, it'll be at an angle, and that's how you must place your pattern. And take the measurement so in other words if I was taking the measurement on the paper now it'll be at an angle and then I will follow that line to the fold to make sure it's accurate so you first lay all your pattern pieces out you pin them down and then you start cutting you don't cut one piece at a time you cut in completion once you've pinned all your patterns once you cut out your panels, you can either leave your pattern pieces onto your pattern just with one pin so that you know what your pattern pieces are when you're getting to the sewing machine to construct them or you can take a little piece of paper and write down what it is of the pattern piece and just pin it onto your, your pattern, I mean onto your fabric pieces, put it into a packet and then go ahead over to your sewing machine um, and obviously start sewing. You need a stretch needle because this is a stretch fabric. So that gives you the first step that you need to do. So it tells you to put stabilizer on the shoulders, which you can use a stay tape or satin ribbon. Um, and then obviously just stitch it down and give your seams a press on the shoulders. 
Once you've joined the shoulders together and you've put the stay tape on both shoulders, the next thing to do is to actually do a roll hem from the center front front around the neckline, the back neckline, all the way around. It's a one and a half centimeter um, roll hem. So I'm going to take half a centimeter, I'm going to roll that back, and then I'm going to roll it again. You can take your pins and go all the way right around and do your roll hem. So you can pin right around the neckline, right around from the front, on the back neckline, all the way down to the opposite side. Um, I do suggest you use a serial on cotton um, and a stretch needle. For economical reasons, I'll buy the, the bigger cones, um, or if I need a specific color, I'll buy the smaller in a serial on. And the whole idea is that you need to stitch as close as the edge of the actual roll hem on the inside of the garment. You'll place it on your foot, under your foot, Now I suggest that you go slowly as you work your way around. And you will do this right through the neckline. Check your tension. Um, that looks absolutely great. I'm very, very impressed with this little baby. All right, just continue. you a very nice clear illustration how to do a roll hem right around the front and the back neckline because now you really have joined the shoulders. It tells you to align your fronts together to find your center front points. So this step is very important that when you were cutting out your, your patterns that you clearly marked any notches and made sure that you put them onto your fabric so when you come to constructing the garment you can align and follow according to those notches. So once you've done that, it shows you to close the side seams. Then it shows you to do a stay stitch around the actual arm holes. A stay stitch is to keep the garment from stretching. And it shows you, you can use bias binding to actually close off the arm holes to keep it nice and neat. Next step would be is to put your pockets this is the under pocket. You're going to pin it along the opening of the front trouser. Okay, you're going to pin it down. And you have done your other side as well. Alright, so that is on the side seam. Okay, and this is the front is your front crutch. That's the front crutch and the shorter cut open opening is for your pockets. So you're going to stitch along here half a centimeter on both the pockets and you're going to turn it over and just give it an edge stitch. When you're working on the curve you just give it a slight um, stretch to open up the seam when you're working around a curve. Align your seams, your, your edges together. So there it is. What you will do is you're going to take this curve and you're just going to take your scissor and not too deep, about a half a centimeter, you're just going to snip in to release any form of tension. I'm going to make my stitch a little bit wider. What I've 
done now is I'm taking all the seam allowance and I'm going to put it onto the actual front of the trouser, not on the pocket, and I'm going to stitch on it. So I'm doing a top stitch. It's very important to do this dead straight because it's visible to the eye. If you feel you can't stitch dead straight, then rather um, skip this step. So there you go. So that is the front of the trouser. There is the front crutch with the single notch. And here is the pocket. I've just turned it back, given it a top stitch. You do exactly the same to the other pocket. I just want to show you what I've done with the fronts. So the fronts, I've done the roll hem all the way right around. I just changed my thread on the black. There's the roll hem. Alright, so go ahead and do the other the other sides and um, leg pocket. Is the two front trouser panels with the pockets being stitched. So now you're going to open this up and you're going to take the outer pocket. This is your side seam that is the inside of the pocket. As you're going to lay it down like that, that's the finishing off, that, that's how it should look like. You're going to open it up and you are going to join your pockets around the curve and the outer side of the pocket. You're just going to do about a half a centimeter seam, seam allowance, right around. Alright, so the next step would be now you actually just fold the pocket back. So if you go to the waistline of the trouser, and you'll see this is where you stitch the front of the pocket, you've joined the two pockets together, you fold that over, your edge your top stitching is, you fold that back, and you can put a pin in over here. You can give that a secure stitch, which is on the waistline, and then you've got, so you open this up, open up the front of the trouser, and you've got the side seam, You can stitch that down where the pocket is of the opening of the pocket along the side seam just a half a centimeter seam just to secure it it's the front crutch so you'll take a two two fronts together and pin and close your front crutch and do the same to the back crutches aligning any notches
an extra seam to go over it just to give it that extra secureness so that it doesn't doesn't snap or pop the threads okay now you're going to go to your back trouser and when you do um, you know cut your fabric and you're cutting a pattern in your fabric you must always make a note of what the right side or the wrong side of the fabric is that you're going to be using okay now I'm going to put the two crutches together I'm going to align the two notches okay The next step would be to actually join your side seams together. So I've pinned all the way down the bottom of the leg. Okay, you can see here is the pocket area. There is your center front cr um, crutch. There's the other, the opposite side pocket. And I've pinned all the way down the bottom. inside leg to the crutch pinned all the way down so now I'm um, just gently when you're going around the curve just sort of straighten the seam slightly when you're busy sewing not to, put, not to um, stretch it too much One side, one side um, seam all the way down. So now you can basically just do the exactly same on the other side. So I'm pressing the side seams. I'm pressing the seams going towards the center back of the trouser. I'm using my my roll sleeve that I made. That I can actually press the seams in one direction and working on the curve of the side of the leg. I've also got the ham roll that I use for the pocket area and for curves. Check out my other link of where I show you how to press with these particular items. The next step is to take your bodice and to pin the side seams together. So here is the top overlap, the two top bodices, the right and the left, and here is your back, your shoulders. So you're going to pin and stitch along the side seams. And what I've done is I've just pinned with the two center front notches are before I attach it onto the trouser. And once you've done your side seams, your one and a half centimeter side seams, then you need to go to the arm hole and do a roll hem. So you would do your roll hem around your arm holes, and then you're going to attach your bodice onto your actual trouser and but before you put the elastic on, you're just going to try it on without the elastic and just pull the elastic over your waist and just going to first do the roll hem around the arm hole and then I'm going to attach a buckle in the front of the shoulder on both of them, both shoulders and then I'm going to close the side seam. For um, elastic um, find your, your waist and sort of just, you know, feel where it's sort of comfortable and just overlap about 3-4 centimeters over, zigzag that 4 centimeter overlap. I'm going to start just sort of halfway of the arm sack. I'm going to do the, the roll hem. I'm not going to go all the way to the side seams. When I join the side seams together, I want the seams to be flush, not bulky over the the sides um, of the roll hem. When you get to the shoulder, if you see that the seams are a little bit bulky, you can trim off some of the seam 
just to make it less bulky when you do your roll hem. Alright, so I didn't go the whole arm off. I've just done half. Now I can take the buckle before I close the side seams. And I'm going to thread this through. Because it's the bonbon knit fabric, it's, it's easy to get through the buckle. It's not bulky. So now the hem is closed on this side. Now I can feed this through. I'm going to do this to the other arm on. I have closed the side seams and I'm going to continue closing the roll hem around the arm on. I'm going to open up the side seams. I'm going to open up the seams and I'm now going to prepare the roll hem. This is where you can use lots of pins. So this is what you'll have now, is you'll have the pants, and you've done the pockets. You've done the arm hole and you've done your side seams. I've put a buckle in, that's optional. And you'll see here is the nip for the centre front. You decide which way you want to wear it. Usually it's right over left. Just remember women are always right. But what I'm going to do in this case, I'm going to do it the other way around because I want the pink to be the dominant colour than the actual black. So now I'm going to align these two notches together. I'm going to pin it, the waistline um, seam. Okay, like that. Now, if I drop this and I turn it inside out, okay, so the, I've taken the top bodice and I've just dropped it down and I've aligned the center, the center notch with the center front, um, the, the actual crutch, the crutch line of the trouser. And I'm making sure that the, the waist of the trouser and the waist of the bodice seam is aligned and the overlap of the opposite side of the bodice is pinned so i've adjoined the side seams there's the side seam of the trouser and this is the side seam of the bodice i've taken the center back of the bodice and i've aligned it with the center back of the crutch so these are all the right sides kissing. She's the wrong side on the outside. These are all the right sides together, joined together. And then of course the side seams are connected as well. So now I can take it off the doll and I'm going to stitch all the way around the waistline, attaching the bodice to the tri. Alright, so now I can just go ahead and actually sew it. Alright, so this is the jumpsuit with art the elastic on. So take your elastic, put it over your your body into the waistline and take it into the waist and just ruche up. Okay, and have a look and see if that looks a bit better. And if it's not too big, if it's too big, then just take in the side slightly. Um, I found with this pattern that from the shoulder to the bottom line of the bodice was exceptionally long. So I took off four centimeters off my bodice. Because the measurements on the pattern I say to you, check your back shoulder to your waist measurement. And when I did that, it was 10 centimeters longer than my waist point, okay, to the, the pattern's waist point and the hemline, well, from the hemline. So you can also keep in mind that, you know, when you're having a, a jumpsuit like this with a soft fabric, it needs to be slightly blues on because you're stretching, you're moving. You don't want it to be totally fitted because that is for a garment that is very, very fitted. This is just close fitting. This is not, you know, completely figure hugging. 
All right, so have a look. If this is too long for you and you've got too much blue zone hanging over, then rather unpick the waistline and shorten your bodice area. All right, so now I'm, I'm quite happy with this elastic um, measurement. I'm going to add that into the, the waistline with a very fine zigzag stitch. Then at the bottom, you just take a little piece of elastic. If you are going to do the elasticated um, view, um, or you're going to do just a plain hemline, the plain hemline would be just a roll hem according to the length that you want your trouser. So I'm going to just go and measure the elastic around my calf area. And feel that's okay because I might just want to wear my pants up like that as well. And then I'm going to now just basically add a little tunnel. There's two ways of doing this. You can either make a tunnel and thread through the elastic um, with a you know a safety pin, or you can actually take the hem, stitch the elastic on, and then roll it over and closed. Usually overlocking it first, but in this case, not overlocking. Um, this jumpsuit for the purpose of the video. Okay. The bodice connected. I've taken the elastic which I have closed into a circle. I now fold this, I basically fold it in half. I get the center point, put a pin in, you fold it in again, and you get the other half. So in other words, you've got all the you got quarter measurements right around the waist, the elastic waist. So now you're going to attach the other half point to the front of your waistline and then the other pin to the side of the waistband, your side seam, and the other quarter pin to the other point of your side seam. So when you stretch the elastic, you're giving it an equal proportion of elastication on each quarter of the actual waistline. You can put your machine onto a small zigzag stitch so they can actually help with the elastication and pull as you're going along. Alright, so there is the zigzag. And just continue that right around the actual waist. We're finishing off the garment by doing the elastication at the the bottom of the trouser for those that have decided to do the elasticated um, part of the trouser, or just going to do a normal roll hem. If you have a normal hem, you would just do you can just do a roll hem, whatever width that you need for your length. So in this case, what I've done is I've taken the the measurement of the elastic. I've circled it and joined the edges together so now it's a circle. I'm now going to take it to the seam and I fold the elastic in half. So I'm pinning the one half onto the one side seam and the other half to the other side seam. And I just make sure that all my side seam seams are going towards the back of the garment, not towards the front. I'm going to take the centimeter and flap it over the elastic. This is a centimeter wide elastic. And there I've just folded it over. My seams are all going towards the back. There's no bulk on the front of my trouser. I'm just going to stretch this open. I'm going to place the pin in the middle. So it's a balanced amount of elastication on the, the hemline. Okay, so it looks like that. It's just covering the elastic. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to roll it one more time over and I'm just going to edge stitch it. So I'm going to roll it one more time over, put my pins in. Hold it down with my thumb, just roll it over, put my pin in, without the thread. Hold it firm with my thumb, just give it another turn over. So if I 
stretch this it should all fold roll down together and I can just give it an edge stitch giving it a stretch as I'm sewing along.